Now, I'm sure that you didn't know that back in April of this year, the Journal of Clinical Medicine published an explosive study on the download titled The Incidence of Myocarditis and Pericarditis in Post-COVID-19 Unvaccinated Patients, a Large Population-Based Study. Now, for some strange reason, corporate and mainstream media and government kind of overlooked this little story. Wanting to practice the age-old art of science, the researchers studied 800,000 adults, 200,000 of whom were COVID-infected, and 600,000 were controls, to see if COVID sufferers were at a higher risk for myocarditis and pericarditis. And here is what the researchers concluded. Post-COVID-19 infection was not associated with either myocarditis or pericarditis, we did not observe an increased incidence of neither pericarditis nor myocarditis in adult patients recovering from COVID-19 infection. Seems odd, no? It's odd because the CDC has been putting forth the following for a year now. Basically, that pharmaceutical intervention, you know, that little pharmaceutical intervention, is safe and warranted because the risk of getting myocarditis and pericarditis after COVID is higher than the risk of acquiring those dangerous conditions from the pharmaceutical intervention itself. However, from the data the Israeli researchers found, the exact opposite, which creates a conundrum now, doesn't it? Whom to believe? Not only is that an issue, of course, but the CDC's whole myocarditis risk theory depends on the pharmaceutical intervention preventing infections which, according to the manufacturer, as we've learned recently, it doesn't. All this to say, even if we suspended disbelief and went along with the fact that the CDC's premise is correct, that COVID does increase myocarditis risk by taking the pharmaceutical intervention, wouldn't you encounter double the potential risk? The risk from the pharmaceutical intervention itself, as well as the risk from COVID? Now, if I'm missing something here, please feel free to point it out and correct me. It won't be the first time in my life I've been wrong, but maybe the last. Unlike corporate journalists who seem to struggle with a basic Google search when it comes to uncovering data and studies, I, for some strange reason, got lucky and found a few that explore the relationship between the pharmaceutical intervention and myocarditis. I've included the links to these I've included the links to these studies as well as this one in the notes below in case anybody from government or big mainstream media or CDC or Health Canada is watching. Personally, I'm more than happy to offer this public service to both the CDC and Health Canada, given I know how overworked they are and that it's easy to see how they may have simply overlooked these studies which have been out for almost a year now. I'm sure that as soon as they put their crack expert team on reviewing these studies, both the CDC and Health Canada will be updating its vaccination guidance pronto, right? Even if they don't do that, I'm sure at a minimum, they'll mention this most recent study along with the others, right? Given that they're committed to informed consent. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can also follow me on my Rumble and my Locals account. And if you're new to the channel, please check out the previous videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Jump on board and I will see you next time.